says, I found out who it was. It was me, he says. And not me being, being the poet, uh, the only poet, but me being part of a, uh, of a group of leaders which are artists. So the artist as a manager, the artist as a leader, um, his role defined in Schiller's little book is to keep this kind of spiel, <coughs> to, to, uh, to, to evoke this kind of, of desire for play, desire for, for movement, desire for schwang, by always, in all circumstances in life, finding the crack between the two forces, going in and doing things in various ways. All right. Of course, you can say that uh, the form, the social form or, or form, is always present. And even if you are, um, and you can now go and say, aha, with this, with this sort of book, with this Schillerian interpretation of Kant, one could go back upstream, so to speak, to the artists that have, some artists that have been active and sort of working in, 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 in our world. And as I said, this is limited in my case, one must feel, feel the limit, it's limited in time and it's limited in space. And the question is to what extent did uh, other stories like that support the role of the artists in other societies, in other times, and, and, and other places, and other places. Anyway, Joseph Beuys, we all know the work of Joseph Beuys, and the work of Joseph Beuys is full of material, ma 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 matter, it's even uh, focused on few few stuff like the felt, like the fat, which all is own mythology you could say. But the work of Joseph Beuys, taking it as a Schillerian illustration if you want, is also the work of someone who always worked in group. And he may have stood out as some kind of a logo or brand or, or name, but he was constantly forming organizations, be it his own team, be it, be it the Free University, be it what he did in Documenta, be it the start of the Green Party in Germany, and so on and so forth. So this is someone moving, operating as mm, aesthetic leader, if you want, manager, if you want. Some would say entrepreneur, rather, because managers has a bureaucratic connotation in itself. And he was always in touch with the materiality and operating in a field where these things were present, materiality and form, in the sense of ideas of how people should organize and, and so on. You can go to the icons and uh, you can go to, um, I mean, uh, for me, having this uh, chicken soup book in head to come here to Ljubljana and hear you guys uh, tell us um, generously tell us what you are up to is very interesting because the question is to what extent you enrich and you do really enrich uh, different pictures and ways of action and you enrich this Schillerian way but that, that I will not bring up because this is for the experience we are writing now for me at least but you can take you know things which are which are um, commonplace even today and this is of course the the negotiations going on for the Reichstagsverhüllung in Berlin, where, where Christo and Jean-Claude are sitting talking to, to Willy Brandt and some other people, and I think even the real estate operator who was, uh, um, who was uh, important for, for running this in Berlin is present and so on. So it's, and you take that kind of experience, that kind of art, in order to use something that we all know about from the media, as of course extremely materialistic, extremely matter-based, extremely engineering-based, you can say. So what you have, and now I fall back in my little box world, I mean, I, I fall back in the, the management uh, sort of this um, form, deformation professionnelle, I try to patch for myself a, a model to understand what goes on. And I see that the artist is all the time working together with the technician in various ways, or who is artist, who is technician. Uh, we go to boys, we see, yeah, we see media, and we know this kind of, the art historians tell us that, there are seminars about it, and you just have to go there and you see the guys that are looking upon it through their cameras, uh, through their, their, their articles, through their, yeah. At the same time, 
you have the audience coming and you know this is part of the the power I would say of the neural experience is to come to a place you already heard of theoretically or in the media. We come here, we've heard of the urban group, we are experiencing and you're introducing us to this and this is, has such a power that we are we are prepared um, to, 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 to spend lots of time and to, to uh, uh, go far away and to go and see things which theoretically you can actually read about. Exactly the same thing with these kind of installations. I mean, they're full of, full of information in the press, full of information in the media, but you still go there. And when you are there, you experience things together. So, in the other, the other side of what I call, that is what um, my talk is, is, uh, is led, what I call this kind of what would an enterprise, what would a firm, what would um, an entity, an organization be that sort of comes out of art in a sense and comes out of the artist, what I call the art firm. On the other side you have um, a complex interaction, of course, between critic and audience. Huh? Complex interaction, interpretations of the artwork, various spectacular. This guy runs around the, the Reichstag and he is very good at himself. Thereby, at that time, it was D-Mark. You could pay uh, four D-Marks or something like that, and you got free uh, in, in, in wrapped up. Okay, and around um, around the Cristo installation, there was all these tents selling the artwork according to very specific rules of how what should be sold, how it should be sold, and so on. Everything extremely carefully managed by the artist, huh? and the catalogs. In that case, uh, a kind of ode to 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 um, to um, industry, an ode to production, um, an ode to uh, also ecology, an ode to um, enterprise. I even say free enterprise with the connotation he has. Here is the, the, the wrapping, the, the textile, how it is produced, uh, that it is ecologically produced, that it could be recycled by being buried, it would be buried as some kind of lining in building new streets, and new things, that it is produced in Germany, that it is produced by German workers, that it's paid at market wages, that it's not art that is demanding money from the tax, you know, the whole kind of rhetorics of Christo, which also is his action plan, is based by, and you're not paid by the taxpayer, uh, they pay for it themselves, being Christo and Jean-Claude, paying for it by what they get in by selling the, 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 the blueprints of the projects that will come in, that almost becomes kind of shares in this project. And so, we are, we are uh, facing a, a, uh, a model, having uh, patching together this in my chicken soup version of, of what art uh, could perhaps be. If we want to go back to it, this is a suggestion, and we, we're acting using using uh, um, connections and encounters with art to inspire ourselves for how action should be managed. There are artists, technicians, critics, and audience. You can think of probably others. And God knows these relations between the different players is not as straight as these lines would uh, suggest. God knows they are. And and uh, yeah. What is behind? What is our management theory? Well, again, our management theory in this case, my case, is then origins in, in Kant. And of course the third critique being after the study of, of uh, nature, after the study of ethics, you have the aesthetics in the middle, connecting to ethics, connecting to science, but sort of not being. Hmm. 